Hello again. So today we're going to be looking at what's classed as a part B to a standard deviation question. Solely at the sentences. Now these are very tricky in the exam, but when you do it, they are worth two marks, okay? Two marks if you are good at these and remember how to do the sentences nice and short and sweet. So let's have a look at a couple of examples um, over the page. So Example one, the mean price of bread in a sample of local stores is £1.25 and the standard deviation is 7.4. The mean price in a sample of large supermarkets is £1.5 and the standard deviation is 3.2. Now we have to make two comparisons here, which it doesn't actually say in the question. So our two comparisons, statement one should always be about the mean. Okay, so statement one, we're going to look at the two mean prices. Now, out of preference and just habit for me as a teacher, I always start talking about the second one. So I'm going to start talking about the supermarkets. You might want to do it the other way, but your answer would then be the complete opposite of what I'm going to write in the next slide. So here is your perfect sentence with some copy and complete spaces. For always start with on average. On average is a substitution for talking about the word mean. If you put the word mean in there, in the exam, they will take they will, you won't get that mark. So start your first sentence with on average supermarket prices are now the supermarket prices are one pound five compared to one pound twenty five. So think of a word to put in there. It could be on average supermarket prices are lower, it could be cheaper, it could be less. I'm just gonna go for cheaper. One pound five is cheaper than one pound twenty five. And their prices are now this is talking about the variation of the numbers. So we're looking at a standard deviation now. Our standard deviation for supermarkets is lower. What did that mean again? Remember the first day we said the lower it is, the closer together the prices are. So the prices are less varied than smaller shops. Now let's think about this. Does that make sense to you in real life? Have you ever been to buy a loaf of bread out your corner shop compared to out the supermarket? It's dearer in corner shops because they can charge more. Large supermarkets will all keep their prices roughly the same because of competition. So to me, this makes sense. Smaller shops, the prices will be completely varied because some shop, little corner shops will inflate the prices. Supermarkets need to keep all their prices the same because they need to compete with each other. So on average, supermarket prices are cheaper and their prices are less varied than smaller shops. I would not write any more than this. You don't have to say because, you don't have to say in here why you think of this you don't have to say because of the lower standard deviation you don't have to i've found the shorter the sweeter the sentence the easier it is to mark and get the full marks and less chance of contradicting yourself now if you're the person who wants to go the completely other way you would say that um corner shop prices are dearer on average on average corner shop prices are dearer and the prices are more varied than supermarkets you don't even probably need this bit that says and smaller shops or in the supermarkets. That would be perfect. So that is my sentence for you guys. Start with on average. Make sure your sentence knows what you're talking about. So a couple of tips. Mention the subject. Mention the topic. Mention the topic of the question. If you don't do that, we're not going to give you anything. If you just say, oh, the scores are more varied, the scores are less, we're not going to get anything for that. Talk about what we're talking about. Let's look at another example. So example two, two maths classes are competing to see who is the best class. Miss Brown's class have a mean score of 80% and a standard deviation of 2.6. Mr Black's class has a mean of 80% and a standard deviation of 10.1. Which is the better class and why? So you'll notice straight off, they both have the same mean score. So on paper, if I was just looking at the average score at the bottom of the spreadsheet, I'd say both those classes are as good as each other. But let's look at these again and get our sentence in. So again, my sentence has started with on average. There's more to fill in in this one because it's slightly different. Um, and I've gone with Mr Black for the second sentence because that was the second bit of information in the sentence. So Miss Brown, both have an average of 80. So on average, both classes um, score the same. And that's very possible. Two pupils can both get 80% in a test, but one pupil will definitely be better than the other. One pupil will consistently get things like 80%. One pupil could just be doing it by a fluke. So let's look at the standard deviation this time. So Miss Brown has a standard deviation of 2.6. 
compared to Mr Black, who has a standard deviation of 10.1. So Mr Black's classes scores are, his standard deviation is a lot higher. So the higher it is, the more spread out these numbers. So his test scores are more varied. Now, if I was looking for the best class, his average score of 80%, he could have a lot of 20%, 30%, a couple of hundred percent in there. His scores could be absolutely everywhere, bringing it down to an average of 80%. Miss Brown's class, if they've got a low standard deviation of 2.6, that means their numbers are all pretty close together. So her class will be getting all maybe 70s, 80s, 90%s. So her class is the better. So Miss Brown's... So Miss Brown's is a better class here. Her lower standard deviation means that her class are consistently getting similar marks. So hers are the better class. Mr Black's has been pulled down or bumped up for a lot of people based on a wide spread of numbers. I hope that makes sense to you. And the final scenario, we already kind of did these in my previous video. Um, we have the average weight or the mean weight of five Slimming Planet members is 96 kilograms. The standard deviation of the weights is 6.8. Um, write down their new mean and standard deviation if everyone loses exactly two kilograms. So I did an example about me and my brother always being two years apart. Two years ago, we were, our average... Um, our standard deviation would have been the exact same, There's still always the same spread. So if everyone loses exactly two kilograms, the standard deviation isn't going to change. So the new standard deviation, if everyone loses exactly two kilograms, is just take is just the exact same as this. So the new standard deviation is still 6.8. If everyone loses exactly two kilograms, it means that um the average weight is just going to go down by two. So 96 would go down to 94 kilograms okay and the reason for the standard deviation not changing is because the spread is still the exact same so the spread is unchanged okay everyone has lost the same amount and i did one a wee bit like that the other day they've not had one of these in a few years so this is my prediction 2020 sorry 2021 this is going to come up i predict i might be wrong okay uh that is my examples so I've only done three. There is one more scenario, but I think you'll be okay with that one when you come to see the example we're doing. So good luck with the worksheet I've uploaded and let me know how you got on with these. Please remember, I start with the second person all the time. If you start with the first person, your answers will be the complete opposite to mine. It's very difficult to mark these and I will try and um, put my sentence in on the answer sheet as good as I can. So good luck.